वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर मोनिका खेतरपाल आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ एम एस सी फाइनल फिजिक्स इन दिस आई एम डीलिंग विद द फिफ्थ पेपर एंड वी वर डिस्कसिंग अ टॉपिक फेरो मैग्नेटिज्म इन आवर टू डेज लेक्चर विल डिस्कस अबाउट द मेटीरियल्स विच आर टर्म्ड एज फेराइट्स और वी कैन से दैट वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट फेरी मैग्नेटिज्म वट आर फेराइट्स फेराइट्स आर मेटीरियल्स विच हैव मैग्नेटिक प्रॉपर्टीज दैट आर वेरी यूजफुल इन मैनी टाइप ऑफ डिवाइसिस दे आर हार्ड ब्रिटल एंड दे आर पॉली क्रिस्टलाइन दैट मीन्स दे आर मेड अप ऑफ स्मॉल क्रिस्टल्स नाउ टू अंडरस्टैंड दियर स्ट्रक्चर what i am doing i am dividing my material into two sublattices that means the whole material is divided into two parts as we know that in an anti ferromagnetic material when we divide the material into two sublattices then these two sublattices contain spin which are equal and opposite that means they compensate each other now in ferrites we are dividing material into two sublattices in such a way that number of spins of two sublattices are different and these two sublattices have a spin which are opposite then such an uncompensated anti ferromagnetism is called ferry magnetism what does uncompensated means uncompensated here means that the number of parallel spins are not equal to number of anti parallel spins and we have used term uncompensated anti ferromagnetism why anti ferromagnetism because these two sublattices have a spin which are anti parallel to each other hence these materials somehow behave as anti ferromagnetic material but they have a resultant magnetic moment hence <coughs> the external behavior of these ferrites will be similar to that of ferromagnetic material <coughs> the most common example of ferrimagnetic material is magnetite magnetite is Fe3O4 or FeO Fe2O3 here iron is in both types that is in ferrous iron and ferric iron state now we have our material to be made up of two sublattices in the first sublattice we have trivalent ions and the other sublattice consist of other half of trivalent ions and bivalent ions of iron this is the <coughs> electronic configuration of iron atomic number being 26 this is the configuration 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 total number of 18 electrons are filled forming an inert argon shell after that 4s2 3d6 this occupation takes place according to the hohn's rule now i am considering iron 
ferrous iron we can see first of all these 3d6 electrons the distribution takes place in such a way firstly they pair up parallel and the sixth electron set up anti parallel hence we have number of unpaired electrons to be 4 and each electron contribute a spin half so the resultant spin will be 4 into half that means 2 and the magnetic moment will be as each electron each unpaired electron contribute a magnetic moment of 1 view b and there are 4 unpaired electron so the total magnetic moment will be 4 mu b. This is the condition for ferrous ion Fe2+. Now, I am considering the case of ferric ion. That means Fe3+. In Fe3+, the one electron which was set paired in this shell, 3D shell, will be removed and so we are left with 5 unpaired electrons. Hence, the resultant spin will be 5 into half that means 5 by 2 and this ferric ion will contribute a magnetic moment equal to 5 mu b. So, the total magnetic moment of magnetite Fe3O4 if all the ions that means trivalent and bivalent ions they are parallel then the contribution of magnetic moment will be because of two ferric ions the contribution will be 2 into 5 and ferrous ion the contribution was 4 so the total contribution of magnetic moment that means effective number of magnetic moment will be 14. This is the condition if all the spins are parallel. But the experimental value of magnetic moment of magnetite is 4.1. That means there is a lot of difference between experimental and the observed data. This difference, this discrepancy can be accounted if we consider that half of the trivalent ions, they are in one sublattice with the spin up and other trivalent ions, they are in the second sublattice with the spin down. That means the magnetic moment of Fe3 plus ions cancel out and the observed magnetic moment arises only because of Fe2 plus ions. This observation is in agreement with the neutron diffraction model. Here we have considered the example magnetite. The general chemical formula for ferrite is MO Fe2O3. Here M is a divalent cation. It is here we have used iron. It can also be cadmium, nickel, copper, cobalt or magnesium. Now we will consider the structure of ferrites. <coughs> The structure of ferrites is similar to the mineral spinal structure which is MgAl2O4. The general formula as we have already stated is MoFe2O3. There are oxygen ions in ferrite. These oxygen ions has a radius of 1.32 angstrom. Now, I am taking the one unit cell of a ferrite. The one unit cell contain 
32 oxygen ions. Along with the 32 oxygen ions, there are trivalent and divalent metallic ions. Trivalent ions, Fe3 plus ions, number of them is 16 and the number of divalent metallic ions is 8. So, overall we have 24 metallic ions, 16 are trivalent and 8 are divalent and there are 24 sites. Out of these 24 sites, 8 are tetra and 16 are octa. So, these 24 metallic ions, they will be distributed among 8 tetrahedral sites and 16 octahedral sites. The radius of these metallic ions vary from 0.4 to 1 angstrom. Now, how these metallic ions are distributed among tetra and octa sites, it is very important in deciding the magnetic behavior of ferrites. On the basis of distribution among tetra and octa site, there are three different structure. The first structure is termed as normal spinal structure. In this normal st <coughs> spinal structure as we have said that there are 8 divalent ions. These 8 divalent ions they occupy the tetracyte and 16 trivalent ions they occupy the octacyte. Octacyte is differentiated by tetracyte by forming a bracket among the divalent ion, by forming a bracket among this trivalent iron ion. So, the structure will be Me2 plus, this is my tetracyte and octacyte is denoted by a bracket and the ion is trivalent, there are two ions Fe2, 3 plus. Outside we have shown oxygen. This is the structure of normal spinal. Now the other structure is inverse spinal structure. In the inverse spinal structure, the eight divalent metallic ions, they occupy the octa position. This is my octa position. These are divalent metallic ions, they are occupying the octa position. Now, other ions are trivalent ions. These trivalent ions, they occupy equally the octa site, this is octa site and equally the tetra position. So, in this case, that means inverse spinal structure case, the structural arrangement will be Fe3 plus, this is on tetracyte, bracket denoting the octacyte, Fe3 plus, divalent metallic ion and outside there is oxygen ion. Now, the third structure is the intermediate case in which divalent and trivalent metallic ion they occupy both sides that means they occupy tetra as well as octa site. So, first of all I am taking my trivalent metallic ion. If I assume that x component of trivalent ion is on tetra site then the 2 minus x component will be on octa site. Similar is the case for divalent. I am taking my divalent to be on x component to be on octa site. So, it is 1 minus x component will be on tetra site. This will form the structure of Fe3 plus 
metallic ion concentration 1 minus x and it is divalent and on the octa side we have iron 2 minus x and it is trivalent and metallic ion concentration x and it is divalent and there is oxygen 4. <coughs> now as we have already stated that magnetite which is an example of ferrite has an experimental data of magnetic moment 4.08 mu b and this is possible only when if it has inverse spinal structure this was the structure of inverse spinal that means the magnetic moment of trivalent metallic ion cancel and the contribution comes from only divalent metallic ion which in case of magnetite is equal to iron and we know that iron has in the divalent state it has 4 unpaired electrons and number of unpaired electron contribute a magnetic moment of 1 mu b and so we can say that magnetite has inverse spinal structure. Now we will see another forms of ferrites for example if we have zinc ferrite or taking cadmium ferrite these zinc ferrite and cadmium ferrite they have a structure normal spinal structure and they are paramagnetic in nature all other ferrites they have inverted spinal structure that means we can say that ferromagnetism is associated with the inverted structure. So, we can conclude that structure of a ferrite is very important in determining its magnetic moment as magnetic moments of these ionic compounds they are determined by the number of unpaired electron. Thanks a lot for watching.